Welcome to Amusement Sparks, the theme park design show. My name's Andrew Spawn, I'm your host, and with me today is an amazing special guest from all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, Matei Jan. How are you doing, sir? Hey, nice. Uh, thanks for having me on your show. Doing pretty well. Uh, it's Yes, I am indeed on across the Atlantic. It's almost 2 a.m. by now wow. that we got set up, but it's my usual hours. I don't, I don't usually go to sleep until 3 a.m., so I think that's going to be just fine. That's amazing. What time do you wake up in the morning? I have my alarm set up at 7.30, and then I snooze until 9, so I usually... <laughs> So I don't. I, I I get up at eight thirty, but I'm just in bed. When I say get up, I mean I take my iPad and start reading emails and Twitter. And I do that for half an hour like a zombie because I don't drink coffee and I'm a uh -huh. zombie. And then at <laughs> nine I go up and start do some work. Sounds good. Awesome. And the way I found out about you was was years ago through your work on creating the Pixel Art Academy. Can you tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about that because I think it's fantastic and it. Hopefully, it kind of mirrors what my future is going to be looking like as like an online educator kind of person. So, can you tell us about sure. Pixel Art Academy? Yeah, definitely. I also want to hear what you what your future is going to be like. <laughs> sure, because I really like to that. connect this stuff. So, the whole idea. So, Pixel Art Academy is an adventure game, like old school text adventure, and then one day it's going to be a point and click adventure. And in this adventure game, you become an art student and you actually go learn art so you become an art student you get to this academy in a kind of like sci-fi city of retropolis and you learn pixel art and all other kinds of arts as well um, and the kind of trick is that it's yeah it's not like usually video games are imaginary you imagine that you're gonna be i don't know become a wizard and you this is actually a good analogy it's like i imagine it like harry potter but for art, except in Harry Potter, you only pretend or when you play Dungeons and Dragons, you're pretending you're learning those skills. Um, whereas in my game, you are actually learning those skills because instead of just pretending you're going to be an art student, you are actually going to learn those things that your character is learning. You're learning them for yourself. The only way to finish quests is by actually doing the art. So, yeah, so that's the, the main idea comes out of that, that Yes, video games can be used to learn something, an actual skill. And I think they're perfect, especially because they are interactive. And you know how they say, like, don't, wait, don't tell, no, yes, show, don't tell. Yeah. And then I do, do, don't show. <laughs> this is my, like, That's so awesome. you, can read a, you can read a book about it, or then you can see it, somebody doing it, or you can do it yourself. So that's why I think like the video games are actually as an interactive medium are actually quite on top in terms of how well they can teach you something. It's amazing. I, I love the game and I love that it's not just like like Khan Academy or most like online learning sources. It's kind of you're just doing the learning and there's no no layer of, of fiction going on at all. Um, whereas something like Harry Potter, you don't learn anything about like actual skills you can learn. Even if you read every little detail and memorize how the potions class goes. There's nothing you can use in your real life. Like, I don't know. Yours does such a cool combination of those two things where it's like, I want to help out this avatar in this storyline. And to do that, I actually have to become a, a better, more higher achieving student in art. It's it's really cool. I love that, that game and like your level of, of kind of immersion. And like, it seems like you've had pretty good retention as well. Like, I think that's something a lot of online free learning resources struggle with is getting people to come back. But you have your well, master's that, degree, right, in education? Yeah, so as soon as I, so I came up with this idea, I mean, it was kind of brewing in my head, I guess. I wanted to go into, I wanted to combine video games and education for a while because as I'm getting older, I was, I kind of started feeling guilty whenever I'm playing video games, especially one that would like immerse me really in and then I'm like, holy shit, what have I done with my life? <laughs> it's like, you know, where is my where's my time going? I actually want to do stuff or just learn something out of it. And so I felt guilty of games that I was just, you know, like you said, you, I can't use this in the real world. It was just entertainment. So I wanted to move away from that. So do something in that that is also education. And then it just kind of over a lot of years, then it just kind of culminated in 2015. Mm -hmm. So when I came up with the whole concept, and it was also at the same time that I applied to grad school. And so this was going to be my master's project. Uh, and so I was going to do a Patreon for it because uh, 
in the previous one, I was a game developer before. I have my previous master's degrees in computer science, and then I was learning how to draw and do art on my own. And when I was doing games for other companies, I saw that like if you do development for like a year in a vacuum and just behind closed doors, then when you come up, hey, we've made this game, play it. Nobody knows about you, and right. so nobody, you know, it's people think that it's enough to make a good product it's not you have to make a good product and you have to be good at marketing it so it needs to be both and so when i saw that i was uh, i was already i already had my blog called retronator when i talk about other people's video games especially pixel art so i knew that yeah i want to do something visible so my idea for my game pixel art academy was actually to have a patreon going so just i really love this model that you're just you know getting your um like funds together with your the popularity but the problem was because i was going to be a master student in the us while i'm from the other side of the atlantic in europe yeah uh, i would be an international student so i can't because of my student visa i would not be able to actually earn money off campus so i was mm. not able to have a patreon so what i wow. did was i launched a kickstarter instead and this was just in between my research research job in the US and before I went to grad school, I came to Europe for two months. And in those two two months, I launched my Kickstarter. So it was nice. technically all legal because it was not on US soil. <laughs> wow. So anyway, that's that's how this Kickstarter happened. And right after I got the money, I actually went to do the master's degree. So, wow. so that's how I got a master's degree. And uh, I finished all of the kind of design and research elements for my master's degree. And, after that, I had all my Kickstarter money left because I was a research assistant. So grad school basically cost me like I was I was at zero at the end of grad school. So then wow. I just used the Kickstarter money to go into full time production of Pixel Art Academy. That's so cool. It's an amazing product. I'm so glad that it exists. And it's so cool to be able to talk to the person who created it because, yeah, it's it's. I don't know. It's so much what I want in the world where it's like, here's a cool place that actually draws you in and makes you want to learn a skill that's like really useful. And, you know, people could take the skills they learn from Pixel Art Academy and start a career in art or at least improve their skills enough to where they, they can say, you know, I, I am an artist. They feel that confidence to say, I'm an artist because I, I know that because I've completed this much of Pixel Art Academy. I don't know. Yeah, it's, and it's games really are already really good at pulling you in into topics like all mm -hmm. the games I've tried and we're gonna talk about roller <laughs> yeah. coasters today. So definitely like playing roller coaster raccoon. Every, actually, even before Theme Park, that was the first game I bought in a box was Theme Park. Huh. Uh, true fact for PC. And nice. so you know it gets you interested into that. Or when yeah. I was playing Caesar, when you play about the Romans, I would actually learn about the Romans. And back in those days, you would actually have help inside of the game, and you could read about actual architecture in yeah. Roman times. Or when you played Sim Ant, you can read about how ants made colonies. So you can actually learn inside the game. And so games are really good at pulling you, making you interested about the topics. Mm -hmm. It's just that they, in the old days, they at least had those encyclopedias in there or civilization, if you ever played, like you had a, yep. you know, explanations of how, how those technologies work. And that just kind of went away with time. Right. And I was expecting it's going to go the other way, actually. Yeah. It's going to be more and more. So that kind of disappointed me. So you have games that are really good at pulling you, making you interested in stuff. So all we need is to just make a nice transition and why you know why not just put it right there in the game so that's the whole yeah idea for you're already there just do one more step and yeah. teach people something dude yeah. that's that's a really good point and like i when i was growing up like you know in elementary school you have like computer lab time where you're like like my access to technology was very much connected to education when i was young but now i feel like you know the, my last 3 years as a teacher it's like teachers versus technology because it's like the kids can't stop playing games on their phone. And it's like this is getting in the way of you learning. So I don't know. If there was more compelling games, like games that were made to teach you something where you're going to go home and learn something over the summer and on the nights and weekends, like that would be so amazing where the teacher wouldn't necessarily have to fight about the technology and take your phone away. They'd say, that's amazing that you made it to that level because I'm stuck on that one. Or you know what I mean? Like it's cool the progress you're making yes. on your own. Speaking of games that could be used in schools, do you know yes. which game they did use in schools? Yes! <laughs> Minecraft! There's so much you can learn from that game, even like starting in survival mode, it's like that's a relatively realistic world. I know it's not totally true to life, but you could learn about like the layers of sediment and like, um, I don't know, there's a lot of cool like 
naturalistic kinds of things going on in that game, and then once you get like more complicated Red stuff, stone. you can make. Once you get redstone, yeah, you can start making <laughs> calculators and computers and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, have you seen that guy who recreated uh, like Pokemon Red for Game Boy? within minecraft and like the actual wow, no. it's run by like virtual hardware basically it's bizarre yeah. it's, it's a whole it's a whole thing polygon has a youtube video about it but oh it's i have not seen that one i've I, seen when they've do, when they've done cpus and once you have a cpu going it's like yeah yeah you can do anything right. i mean as, as long as you have a von neumann or whatever machine or no a turing machine and it's Turing complete you can calculate everything yeah so and, yeah it kind of connects to Pixel Art Academy in a way because when I first got into Minecraft, um, I, it was like less than ten dollars. You know, it's like I, I've been into Minecraft for a long time. I love the game, and back then, like I was just kind of experimenting with pixel art. Like I know it's three D, they're voxels, mm -hmm. but I had a lot of fun trying to take um, like a two dimensional character, uh, maybe like their their profile picture and then and then a straight on picture, and try to combine those into a three D yeah. image. It was really cool. It's like these characters, like the avatar from from Pokemon games, they don't combine together really. Like the the sprites don't match mm -hmm. up um, in a realistic way. There's no 3D model that's truly possible to rep represent that. I don't know. It was just interesting. It was a cool way to learn more about pixels and how things kind of fit together in creative mode. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so, yeah. it's a very. Oh no, I was just gonna say 3D uh, voxel art. We mm -hmm. call it when mm -hmm. it's pixel art in 3D is voxel art. It's actually like what you said from profile and front. It's much harder it, it, it it's an art so yeah. i was i made this joke for uh, april 1st april fool's joke when i said oh i've built an algorithm that creates this automatically so you just put in profile in front oh my and gosh. it creates it automatically and i posted it um and a lot of people bought it and <laughs> but the, the thing is i did it manually just like you said in, uh -huh. in a painstakingly way so oh, you yeah. know it's gonna happen because when anything people can do computers will be able to do one day but yeah it's definitely at least at this point it's not trivial yet. yeah yeah um, it's an art so this is vaguely connected but uh, I, I know that you're a fan of Pico 8 and and I'm a yes. huge fan of that platform as well I have it on my little uh, pocket chip computer and uh, the the creator of that also has like a kind of voxel based uh, engine Voxeltron. as well yeah voxeltron and uh, I don't know, I think that's so cool. Uh, th that guy would be amazing to have on this show. Like, Yeah, totally, uh, Zap. He's got so many cool... He's creations. on the other side of Pacific for you. He's yeah. in Japan. <laughs> right, he is in Japan. Yeah, in like a cafe, right? I think that's, that's a really totally, cool Totally, yeah. He's, yeah. I think his wife is uh, Japanese, and so uh -huh. they live there, and she's mostly running the cafe. I think both together. It's called Pico Pico Cafe in Tokyo. Yeah. Actually, one of my friends, another American, uh, who went to live in in Tokyo I told him about like one day he just randomly messages me oh I'm in this bar <laughs> like listening to this band like there was like a chip tune party or something like that huh. I'm like dude that's where Pico 8 is <laughs> yeah he does a lot of this kind of uh, scene events you know in like I'm not sure if pixel art but definitely just like gaming and yeah chip tune and that kind of stuff so cool um yeah, that but that just seems like such a cool like romantic thing where you have like the the cafe in Tokyo and then you're doing cool you know innovative things with with virtual uh, consoles. Like I don't know, that's I just want to read a book about that guy. Like it sounds so cool. It's like such a cool setting to me. It's very very appealing. Awesome. Yeah, the so, closest right now you have to a book is uh, there's Pico magazines yes. that were written sooner at the very start and he in the first one he did an article where he was writes uh, writes about everything like history how it all came to that. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> it's really cool. I'm actually gonna have a Pico Eight video coming out. My next YouTube video is gonna be on Pico Eight. So cool. Oh, that's exciting. For that one. Yeah, that's it's probably awesome. gonna be after this episode, or maybe very maybe close by. So that's a nice cross. <laughs> yeah, that works. Awesome. Maybe I'll put the link in the description, dude. That's great. Um, Perfect. cool. So we're here to talk about Minecraft. That's something that we both have a, a huge love for. Like it's got a big place in kind of education, and then also kind of retro style graphics as well. Um, it's kind of funny like a lot of young kids these days like elementary school kids will see you know ga video games from the 80s and they're like oh it kind of looks like minecraft it's like well yeah i <laughs> guess but uh, or the other way around. <laughs> yeah yeah it's like okay well hang on let me because i i taught a um the history of video games class last year and like 
I, I really love that content. And so pretty much whenever I overhear a conversation on the street, I really want to butt in and just be like, let me teach you this whole class. Like, can we sit down somewhere? I have a lot to talk to you about. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm really passionate about the history of video games. And so I don't know. Minecraft is huge. And it's it's reached the hearts of pretty much every person under the age of, I don't know, 15 um, pretty thoroughly, I think. It's had yeah. a huge impact all over the world. And it's it's an awesome game. And they're still updating it. You know, there was a brand new update like a week ago. The aquatic update, which uh, oh, wait, I'm pretty did it stoked just about. come out? Yeah, it came out in uh, I totally in June. missed that. Oh, dude, yeah, I, I took some notes on it. So uh, when we get into the theme park, we might want to add some aquatic cool, stuff. Cool, because I have a I have an aquatic theme already planned. So I was like, nice. <laughs> I have like I know I know you start these shows in a let's start with an overview. Sure. So I was thinking hard about that. So hopefully I can pitch you on my overview that I dude, have in mind. But that... I really need help with all of the rides in each okay. one. Cool, because Minecraft has been was on the very original list when I was coming up with like, what's the show gonna be called? What's it about? Here are some theme park ideas. Minecraft has always been on there, but I'm always like, you can't really do Minecraft in real life because you know you can't really be hitting like a a block and then it'll break into a smaller block and then you can use that to build things. It's like that doesn't seem very realistic. So, what's your what's your pitch? Do you have any ideas of how you can kind of have a Minecraft? Uh, oh, do you think totally. the, the Minecraft like... would work? Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with you on that. I think Minecraft <laughs> yes. is begging for a theme park. It's like Minecraft itself is almost a theme park. I, I, when I was thinking about this, like it just made itself in front of my eyes. Wow. I mean, sure, sure, you can't do like actual mining and mm -hmm. making blocks disappear out of air and having trees hanging there. <laughs> right. Everything else is a theme park. Yep. So yep. first of all, you have the biomes. Biomes are your themes. It's just perfectly, it, they're very diverse, you know, you, you, it's exactly like a theme park. Um, there's a really nice story progression through it, which I'm also going to pitch you on. Cool. Um, so, you know, you start with nothing and then you get some stuff and then, you know, there's all the way to the end and mm -hmm. then you come back and then after you finish the end, you're like, huh, okay, now I'm in a... I've done everything, but you know, you might have missed other stuff. It's just like you go through a theme park, you maybe have skipped a ride somewhere. Yeah. Dude, I, I'm so excited to tell you all about this. <laughs> That's great. I'm really excited as well. Um, dude, yes. So are you thinking about kind of having the, the overall thing like set up by the biomes and you enter in one specific part, like you start in just the forest biome or something like that? Or what do you think? Exactly. I like how we think alike. So <laughs> so the, here's my pitch. So okay. uh, imagine it being a three by three grid. You have nine little biomes. I'm not going to add to that, but that's like your starting point. And yeah. the middle one is an artificial lake. Okay. Oh. So you have, you know, eight ones around and the middle one's a lake and you enter at the bottom in the middle. So that's cool. your entrance area. And the first thing you go, you go left, and there's the jungle. That's your entrance into it. So, you know, the middle one is, the first one is just like everything. Uh, you know, the queues and all, you get a map and everything, and then you enter into the jungle. Mm -hmm. Because it's, I don't know, it, it's, and I'm going to draw this parallel with history, like human mm. history as wow. well. Because oh I do want to put, I do want to put a lot of educational stuff in there, and I'm going to get to that. <laughs> so first of all, you start in the jungle, kind of like, you know, apes start in the jungle. Mm. Plus, it's a really nice biome. You have, I don't know, ocelots. Oc yeah. How you pronounce that. Um, plus, I, I remember when I was playing Theme Park, um, the, the game Theme Park. Right, right. Uh, it had this one of the rides was like a tree house or something like that. Huh. I'm not sure if that's a popular ride or not, but I think that one had it. I was like, yeah, dude, it's like it's a forest. Have a tree house. <laughs> that's cool. Um, and so that's your start. That's just kind of, you know, and you have like different, it's just a nice scenery and everything. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing is when you come out of the forest, um, there's a, you go, because that's how you start. You start with a forest and then you knock down some trees and you get wooden tools. So that's why it starts in a forest because you, you always punch a tree first. <laughs> right. Um, and Seems also dangerous. He, Theme wise or just kind of aesthetically wise, I would have every entrance into the biome would be like actual Minecraft looks like. Mm -hmm. So it would actually have blocks with textures and then it transitions into the real world. Because what I really want with this park is show kids what everything that's in Minecraft, what it looks like in the real life. Whoa. Because they know how things look like in Minecraft. And I'm like, dude, this is totally a real thing. You can actually 
Dude, you're <laughs> using, I don't know, you're making bread. Here, let me show you how wheat looks like, you know? Because wow. it was kind of yeah. like in Europe, we had that thing when there was a... Uh, when uh, when um, city kids were asked to color a cow, they colored yes. it pink or purple because that was like the milk of the chocolate <laughs> cow. And it's the only cow that they've seen in their life. So that's why yeah. I'm like... This park has huge educational potential. True. So anyway, so you wow. start in the tree, tree zone, that's the first one. And then the transition from the tree to the next one is, you know, then your first night happens. And so you have your tools and then you usually, what you do is you dig yourself into the ground to survive mm -hmm. the first night. I'm not sure how you would do the effect of like, yeah, the sun is dawning. But I think I was thinking like you go, cause it's kind of like a rainforest. I'm mm -hmm. not sure how you would get all those trees there, but you could just kind of, you go deep in the forest, it's already kind of dark, and then yeah. maybe you go into an area that has like stars painted on top. I so like it that looks a lot. like it's night. Yeah. And so, and then you could, you could have like employees like dress up as, I don't know, maybe a zombie, and then you kind, they kind of scare you into yeah. the first hole. Cool. And so you go into the hole, this is your first dungeon, or your first time you go in. And so you know how in Minecraft, when you, when you if you chop down, Sometimes you uh, enter mines. There were yeah. already mines there. You'll find so some pre-existing ones, yeah. Exactly. So you would run, the first thing you would be, you would run into one of those mines. And you know how in, you know what in those mines are? They're railroad tracks. Uh-huh. So that's your what first you coaster right there? Railroad tracks, yes. You're running away from under the, the zombies and you get on the mine cart and... <laughs> exactly. Plus, well, I'm not sure about the zombies. Yeah, exactly. You're kind of afraid. Like the 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 mine itself. I think the the enemy there would be the spiders. Sure. That's what I was thinking. Like cobwebs and that kind of yeah. stuff. Oh, that's great. I just meant that you go into the the hole in the ground because you're scared of the the creepers. Yes. And you I can think just play be... the sound effects too. You don't have to have an actor necessarily. It's most kids are are trained to be scared of that sound. You know, you hear a creeper and you're like, oh no, where where is he coming from? And you just kind of run totally. down there. That's great. Cause and that, that's why I'm saying that it's kind of like a story, that the oh. Minecraft in itself is a story that can totally drive the whole totally flow right. to the park. Wow. It, so it I'm totally not sure, do, do you have any um, any other ideas? Because that's how I'm going to do I'm going to pitch you this zone per zone. Yeah. Keep and then, around. but but I only have a couple of rides in mind. Like this sure. one is obvious to me to have like a mine coaster mm -hmm. inside of the, in the mines. I love uh, that. But any yeah. other ideas of what kind of, mine themed uh theme park attractions fit sure at this point um i for me personally i love the aesthetics of being underground in a cave and like part of the experience of playing minecraft is the isolation and like the fear of not knowing what's around the corner it makes you feel like you're you're in survival mode you know it's uh you can't really trust anything around you but in a theme park usually you're in line with a bunch of other people and it's not going to be that same isolated kind of experience so i don't know we could do it where we kind of separate people off but i don't think that's really fr uh friendly to a theme park so instead it's just like multiplayer minecraft and you're kind of all together and then you're kind of can depend on one another for survival needs so i think that that makes a lot of sense and makes it maybe feel a little bit more comfortable but yeah as far as attractions go i love the aesthetics of being in a cave when you can see like um you know the mine cart kind of goes over like the the tracks go over an area where there's like a deep valley within the cave and there's yes. water down there and you can see little yes the creatures and the mobs kind of walking around at the bottom um where you're still safe but you know that there are threats in the area I love it. yeah i think that'd be really cool and just kind of give people an introduction to to the style and like okay we're in the mines now like this is things are really starting to begin here i know you've got your tools and that kind of thing um and speaking of tools do you want them to have, like, are they going to have foam actual weapons, or is this going to be a, a digital thing? Because we could have an inventory system that's virtual, you know, either on, like, an app or some kind of little screen. It kind of shows that little uh, menu that shows, you know, your items and, like, your crafting screen. That could be re that could be done in a, in a digital form if we wanted to. Like with augmented glasses or somehow? How are you I, gonna we could, or just, or just a small screen, you know, like uh, on, a, on a phone screen, basically. Here's your inventory. I, would, I was thinking like of the phone stuff, though. I'm glad you brought that up. It was yeah. like, I'm not sure how the economics work out for foam swords, mm -hmm. but I was actually thinking, like, when you go through the forest zone, you actually get, you know, there would be a place where it shows how people actually, like, cut stuff and made stuff. So this, yeah, I miss this. There should be an educational part in the previous one we talked about how yeah. does somebody actually make wooden tools cool. so it's kind of small workshop 
maybe if you have like classes that go through this park like mm-hmm. you could have people actually like a teacher and then 20 students and actually you know t- take maybe 15 minutes and actually have a class and everyone else that they're just for attractions then they just go past and they see you know t- wooden tools in different parts of construction i love and that. at the end at the end of that one you actually get a wooden tool that you choose so cool. maybe you get a wooden pickaxe or a wooden i don't know what else is a shovel or something like that yeah or regular and then axe what or I, sword. Well, yeah, exactly. So you get one pla- like one foam uh, tool, and cool. then now that they made it into the caves, because the next thing is now you use your Minecraft pickaxe or a wooden pickaxe. Sorry, wooden pickaxe to get actual stone. So now you have stone. Now you can make stone tools. So what I was thinking is like, in this new biome, you get to pick up a new tool. Maybe you can trade the previous one, or maybe you can get the new one. Like if you got a pickaxe previously, now you get a shovel. Maybe there could be some system that like you can only pass something if you have the correct tool, and then maybe somebody else in your family has the Ooh. other one. I don't know. That's like I like a, that. It's kind of like forming but, a party in an RPG. Like you need one person of each class. That's good. Yeah, and then maybe you know, and if you're alone, and like maybe you can just trade different tools for you know, you throw in your wooden sword and then go in with a pickaxe. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so yeah, that's what that's why I would do like yeah, definitely have like the the kind of have some tools be at least I think everyone I think it would be great aesthetically if if it's economically viable to have everyone have their little yeah. foam. That would be equipment. really fun. Yeah. yeah. Especially if they're not going to actually poke someone's eye out with the corner of the pickaxe and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yes, I don't that sounds fun. <laughs> okay, are you ready to go on? I'm so on ready. I'm journey. done with the done with the jungle. So, we went through yeah. forest, jungle. Now we're in the caves. Is this a separate biome? Would you say, or are we the underneath cave? the jungle? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, this is kind of transition area from the jungle biome to the next one. The next one is green grassland. So now you know the the night has ended. There's no more monsters. You've done your coaster in the mm-hmm. Minecraft. You come back out. But you come in a different uh, exit, right? Sure. And so, the, and now it opens up to your classical Minecraft Greenland experience. Cool. So here, this is your first actual day. Now you have the stone tools, and so what people usually do at that point is they would go and build a house, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, their first little base settlement is very primitive, right. but that's your first thing. And this one also needs some uh, real theme park attractions, which I want you to help with. I'm going <laughs> to tell you true. the educational stuff. Uh-huh. So, and, and this is the actual tweet that I posted on Twitter when I was like, why don't, I always thought Minecraft should be a theme park, but yeah. now, so do you know Kimball Musk? He's Elon Musk's brother. No. Kim, so Kimball Musk, he does, um, he does this kind of like, teaching gardens for kids in schools like they would go to a school and they would put uh, like I don't know I don't know the correct expressions in English but you know there would be a soil inside of a big box and kids would actually plant tomatoes and then they see how they grow through time so and and when I when I learned about Kimball Musk I was like holy this is like Minecraft theme park would actually have to have these kind of places where kids can actually learn how yeah. this ki- kind of stuff works because everyone in Minecraft does like they do what do you do, what do you call that when you um is it a hoe right yeah sorry I'm gonna laugh at every time you take a hoe and you make you know the the soil you so that you can put seeds in like all the kids know yeah. how that works in Minecraft yeah. but I really want to show them look but this is how it really works out and maybe they can have a shovel and they can you know try and do that a couple of times That's and then cool. on the next one they have actual wheat growing out so they can see how it looks like that's mm-hmm. what i was saying like every this kind of biome would have some real uh, minecraft mm-hmm. props and then next to them you see oh this is how in real life this looks like and then at the final one you have like the um the site is it the site the, the yeah you know the yep. one that you used to take out wheat exactly so so that's my that's my idea for the theme of the grassland, the second big outside environment is for you to just uh, experience farming. So you build your first settlement. There's like a house or something like that, and the settlement. I don't know what kind of attractions would be appropriate yeah. though. I don't know either. I mean, some people come up with like interesting irrigation systems in Minecraft where they have little like channels of water going around everywhere. Oh, I love this. So you this. could do. I don't know if it's like a lazy river that goes through the gardens or something. That's kind of weird. That's, that's not great. how real life gardens work. No, but it's not it weird at all. That's perfect. 
<laughs> I didn't think of that. That's great. You can, can be, have a log ride or something. Yeah, from and the I mean, forest it could even be, it could be a slow moving kind of thing. It's kind of like going through this this kind of museum type experience or the science center experience, but you're moving like on a log ride through it. Um, providing like the water to each of these crops as your attraction goes through because you're in the water. That can work. I love it. The, uh, the hut, like when you first build your first, you know, dirt house um, in Minecraft, uh, it'd be cool to kind of show how, how early man and how modern humans still use these very basic earthen materials to make, ha you know, habitats out of. Because um, it's, it's pretty cool. Like humans have relied on dirt since the beginning of mankind for some sort of some sort of housing and we've kind of lost that connection i think now people think of dirt as being dirty like that's a negative thing but it you know being a showing a connection to the earth i think is really important and you feel that in the beginning of minecraft it's like every good thing that comes to you comes from the earth and you know every bad thing that comes from you comes from the monsters and stuff <laughs> comes from the <laughs> night yeah so i don't know yeah, so that's why I totally now we are in a stone age right that's yeah. what I was saying. I want to pull this um, it fits. parallel through with history, yeah. right? You've yeah. came out of nice, now you have stone tools. You know, it's the civil start of civilization. You've mm -hmm. built your habitats, you've started your farms, you know, you're domesticating, right? Right. Maybe you would even have some animals here as well. I don't know, chickens. You know how, like, uh, I think some theme parks also have, like, animal zones, yeah. right? Yeah, so that's So you could have, common. like, a small little petting zoo or something like that. Yep. Here so we're not real sheep. <laughs> we're not um, hunter gatherers anymore. You know the the beginning yes. of the game is survival and like just kind of running through everything, punching down trees. That's like your hunter gatherer part of evolution. And so we're beyond that now. Yeah, getting into tools and that's really cool. That's exciting. And so there's a small part of this. It's kind of like a like a nook of this, uh, like a little small sub zone of this uh, grassland thing. Is so in the previous one, there's monsters because of the first night that scares you into the first dungeon. Right. This time, it's kind of on your own accord when you're gonna move into this dungeon. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be a mine. And cool. it's going to be a mine because civilization needs to progress from Stone Age to Iron Age. There's yeah. Bronze Age, but let's forget about that. In Minecraft, you go straight for iron, right? <laughs> right. So you, en you enter into a mine and there's coal and there's iron. And then you come out on the other side and then you see actually how smelting works. You know, how, how all of these kind of iron, everything, iron how it actually yeah. looks like. Wow. I'm, again, I'm not sure what kind of iron coasters, maybe, well, if there's anything... So the the earlier coaster, when you first are kind of running away from the creepers in the back in the forest or jungle, I mean, this part it's like these co that was kind of like you were just stumbling upon some like broken down old mine. This could yes. be a, a, you know a total pro Ooh. Minecraft players version of what Minecraft minecarts can do. So yes. it could be much more involved, much more fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of coaster. The yeah, other one was kind of scary. Yeah, exactly. Because when I was in so. Uh, when I was in the US, I went to a couple of theme parks because I love them and especially because we don't have them where I'm from. Um, so I love that you had, I was, I think I was in the North Bay of San Francisco. I forgot what the Vallejo, I think is the town. Anyway, so it's Six Flags and they have one, I think it's just called Mine Cart Roller Coaster. It's a wooden roller coaster, but it mm -hmm. looks like it's gonna, like the cart I don't even think you have any restraints or something. Maybe you do, wow. but it, it looks like the cart is going to fly off of it. So it's really Whoa. scary. It looks like yeah. it's going to fall apart. It's totally <laughs> safe. So that's why I'm saying, yeah, that one is the first one, right? It's right. that wooden old wooden coaster with yeah. all the noise of wood and everything. You think you're going to die. And uh -huh. then this one, like you said, this one is like a real steel roller coaster, you know, right. high tech. I mean, not yeah. high, high tech, but still, you know, nice little polished and everything. Yeah, totally. Oh, I love it's it. a well-oiled machine. Yeah, that's Perfect. really fun. Okay, I like that are a lot. you ready to move on? Uh, sure, yeah. So now we have progressed from Stone Age to Iron Age. We've built our... You, and here again, you know, before you got the stone tools when you were in the mine, and now you finally, you go to the little uh, iron stuff. Now you change for iron swords and everything. Maybe you should cool. get armor as well. But anyway, Ooh, so that's now a you're, idea. you're kind of ready, you know, you've, you've tasted the first parts of crafting, you're, you feel ready to explore the world. So, mm -hmm. and now you were on the kind of left side of the park, remember, in the middle there's an artificial lake. Now right. is the time when you're like, I'm going to go explore and you want to cross the ocean. Cool. So you go to the lake. 
or that's awesome. It looks like it's big enough. Let's yeah. say that it looks like an ocean. So this is your first voyage across, and here you know you come to the coast, like or to the beach. Um, you know here you have all of your kind of boaty rides, that kind of stuff, um, and one of them. The, the ki- and you could have like small little islands on the way there, but the, the main thing I was thinking is you, there must be some kind of a way to get to the middle of the lake and mm-hmm. then there's a vortex that pulls you wow. down. And you could Whoa. actually have like a team ride, you know, the ones yeah. where uh, like right on top of the water, the, the spinning one. Yeah. And it's, and it's of course, it's called the vortex. And so you, you, one way to get there, there would be multiple ways to get there. One is with the boat ride that would maybe go around and like a guided one. There would be one I thought like, because you can't like, maybe the queues are long. So you want to have one way to just get there. I was thinking, and this might be a little bit ugly, but you know how like sometimes Minecraft players would build a tower up and then they would make a tower, like a bridge. (laughs) And you know how you, you walk backwards and just pull blocks. So, so it would be just somebody build that. So That's there would what be I was like gonna blocks say. that you walk and then it just goes all the way to the yeah. middle of the lake. I love that about Minecraft is like you'll see these beautiful natural mountains and then once you've been there and you've messed it up, like there's <laughs> a bunch of holes through it and then there's just some really weird right angles. Like <laughs> yeah. human beings have definitely been here because there's right angles on everything. Yes. Um, so yeah, I think that's that'd be really funny and very Minecraft because like there's really, you know, pretty mountains in the jungle and then there's just this really long post coming out and you can just kind of walk along that. Exactly. And then maybe there's like an attraction where you just kind of jump off because that's another thing I love in Minecraft is jumping off heights and landing in water. Ooh. It's really fun. It's like going off a high dive. You could do an attraction where maybe oh, it's just see, kind of a drop attraction to get down. To the yeah, that, I was actually thinking of this one for the now that you reminded me for the jungle. You know how you have like the um, I, th- I think it's just called free fall, right? Yeah. So it would take you because you are in the jungle in the rainforest. You would want to have tall trees, and one would just take you all the way up and. Phew, down. That's awesome. But yeah, here it also works for the vortex as well. That's so really my fun. idea was in this vortex, like on top is the spinning yeah. ride, but right. then on the bottom, I'm not sure how technologically they would pull this off, but you can actually go under the ride in kind of like a spiral uh-huh. and more and down to the ground and that's where you le- reach aquatic zone. Cool. So now you have to tell me because you're more uh, l- um, studied <laughs> this one. I have that's no right. idea what the... I, I know only that you would probably have like a ghost ship. You know how they have the swinging ships? Yeah. So there would be just like a ruined ghost ship somewhere. Uh-huh. And anything else, I think it's kind of underwater. And I don't know. You tell me sure. how you designed this one. I, I also have an idea for how you could get there. Because like, I was thinking about the, the lake. You know, It's really fun to get in those little boats. And this new update has, has new control mechanics on the way that the boats work. They're Whoa. like little rowboats. So... Um, It'd be kind of fun if people could actually get in their own rowboat and kind of drive around, but that's dangerous because people will fall off and drown. So instead, what I was thinking <laughs> is, if we had, if it's just an extremely shallow lake, like maybe one foot deep or something, so yeah. you can still sit in a boat and like paddle it. It's a little bit weird, of course, but it's a Minecraft theme park. It's gonna not be totally natural, but it'd be cool. Okay, so you have a a really really shallow uh, area people can paddle their boats around in. But it has kind of like a glass bottom or a transparent bottom. So you can still see okay. down below. And I don't know if you want to have real marine life, you know, like fish and stuff swimming around. Because that'd be kind of cool if it's basically an aquarium with a glass on top and people are yeah. rowing boats on top of that. So you're not actually going to, like, catch a fish. But you can see them down below you in the water. It'd be kind of a cool cool sensation. And then there's, like, in the middle of the lake, you know, there's the part where there's the vortex. And it just has like little walls so the water doesn't pour down in there. I think that could work. And then the, the attraction basically is on like a little elevator that kind of lowers, lowers you down. And when you exit the, the attraction, you're under the water and you're exactly. underneath those aquariums. That'd be cool. Yes. Yeah, that's really fun. I love um, it. Some of the stuff that the, uh, the new aquatic expansion added, I was really, really excited for because I always love being in the water and making like glass houses underneath the underneath the water in minecraft so there are a bunch of shipwrecks now that you can discover that have like treasure and stuff in them um sweet yeah they also added uh dolphins that can swim around and they'll kind of follow you around and be friendly i was gonna say dolphins you know how you have those kid kiddy roller coasters that just do this i would (laughs) have that one in the water it would just go like a little bit down in the water and up it would look like dolphins and then maybe it go dives down back in 
I love that. I want to do that one on the water. It's like a water kitty coaster. That sounds really <laughs> fun. Yeah, and I dolphins like dolphins ride. <laughs> <laughs> there's a. Uh... There's so many cool new things in this expansion, but or this uh, update. But there's also a new kind of of creeper, like zombie. I mean, there's a zombie called uh, the drowned zombie, and they just they live underwater. And some of them have tridents, like uh, like Keen Triton has, like those kind of fork like yeah. weapons. And yes. if you get one of those weapons, you can use it to just kind of fly through the water. Like you swim super fast and you jump really high, kind of like oh. a dolphin. And if it's raining, you can kind of fly. Like, it's really crazy because there's water in the air and you can move through water really well. I don't know. It's kind of weird. But that could be a really fun, like, fast water coaster is, like, imagining that each each of the people on the ride got the trident so they can kind of, like, fly through the water. And it's kind of cool to incorporate new stuff of Minecraft, I think. That one doesn't connect to the real world whatsoever. Um, we can't teach people about, you know, how humans discovered tridents hundreds of years ago and then they could fly <laughs> through the air. It's not super realistic, but that'd no, be it's fun. It's more like an Atlantis, you know, kind of fantasy world. I mean, not everything's going to be, you know, super <laughs> easy. It, it's still a theme park. You still want to have it fun. I think this is... Yeah. Plus, you have the marine life right. aspect of it. True. I and you can learn, you know, learn about the ocean a little bit, kind of like you would at a museum, like, a, I mean, an aquarium. We could basically mm-hmm. have an aquarium here when you're when you're Plus, underwater. Yeah, our Quite dolphin fine. show that that was in all the video games I played. There was always a dolphin show in theme park, totally. so that definitely <laughs> goes right there. The, I, I was telling you, Minecraft is a theme park. Yeah, I guess it you're right. Itself. I was getting hung up on the mechanisms of uh, I hit this big cube with a tool and it turns into a small yeah. small cube. And Don't so worry about I, it. <laughs> yeah, I was getting hung up on like, well, then we have a digital version of it, and like, so when I pick up this cube of dirt it goes into my phone and it's in my inventory and i can drag it around and craft yeah, i see stuff. where you're going with Ugh. this you're all... and that, that might be a fun like augmented reality game or something yes. but that's not what you want for the theme park sounds like a different thing than a theme park at least yeah. in my view yeah sounds I like a, a, that sounds like a pokemon go for minecraft it's like yes. an augmented reality game with minecraft okay that maybe should be another episode that sounds really fun you too. should do that, do that with somebody <laughs> else Oh, yeah, and then um, this new update also adds in coral reefs, so we could teach about coral reefs and how they grow and what they do and um, the threats that they're facing based on, you know, pollution and humanity's expansion into the waters and stuff. Um, There's also icebergs, which are beautiful and really cool to explore and also are pretty powerful as far as uh, environmental impact of humans. Um, We can show some stuff and teach some facts about how icebergs work in the real world. So I don't know, there's a lot of cool new things. Oh, one more. There's underwater ruins as well, um, which I'm a huge fan of, like, the idea of Atlantis and, like, these lost civilizations and just cities underwater in general. So having this area where people can kind of walk around and, like, explore, I think that'd be really interesting. The ruin part plays perfectly because what I want to transition to the next zone is actually people kind of try and escape. They feel like they're trapped underwater yeah. and they're trying to escape. So there would be this kind of ruin maze underwater and now they're trying to escape and they finally get to the beach to get to the next zone. So on your, your overall map, we've kind of gone through the center now. Are we going yes. up or are we going so, to the So let right? me, yeah, let me, let me re, uh, redraw or recap the map so we've started at the bottom in the middle then we turned left to the to the uh, to the forest zone yep then we entered the kind of transition area between the bottom left and the left mm-hmm. is the the go through the mines and then you emerge out uh, in the grassland right and yes. so the grassland is right is to the left of the lake yeah. Now we've went, so now we're going across from the left side of the park to the right side of uh-huh. the park, right? Cool. And so now we've entered, so we went from the left, we've entered the lake in the middle, we went underwater in the middle of the lake, and now we're trying to make our way further out. And so we've just escaped the ruins, cool. the underwater ruins, and now we came out at the other side. Awesome. And, and this is kind of fresh start for us, right? We've We've went underwater, maybe we've lost our tools and everything. So we come out and we come into a desert biome. So now we're in the desert and the the idea of the desert is, well, you know how the desert is. And again, sometimes you would find railroad tracks. So there's your one uh, idea. This would be the place for creepers. I wouldn't have creepers before, but I would have them here because creepers are the only animals that come out at the day. 
Yeah. Right. Or any of the mon of the mobs. Right. So I would have them there, and you would just find these kind of holes that are there. Uh huh. And you, and you know how like if somebody builds a really nice house, and then a creeper comes and it's kind of just half blown. Yes. And there would be and there would just be like redstone like false redstone wiring so uh -huh. basically the idea for the desert is people have been there but the uh, the um creepers wow, have I'm, the creepers have, yes, like, thank you have destroyed sure. it so you're kind of going into this half kind of like almost like wild westish zone you know everything kind of wow. have destroyed but there's also a lot of redstone so this would be the redstone learning area but it's the only thing is it's completely deserted because the creepers have killed everyone so basically they just left behind this kind of almost like a tomb raider style of like different contraptions that just open up and mechanisms that is kind of seems just like operated from thin air because it's just redstone cool. it's just the old remains so that's kind of my idea for it anyway. i like that and and people have both of their hands free now because they they lost their tools uh you know in whatever that underwater experience was where they had to maybe fight some monster off or something so they have both hands available to kind of tinker with and mess with the redstone and kind of try to set up systems. And I don't know yes. if they want to try to build like anything they want to with the redstone or if they're trying to come kind of like, we need to figure out a way to shut this door so the creepers can't get us. Or we could put you know some kind of incentive like this bad thing's going to happen unless we figure out how the science works behind these circuits, the circuitry. And, and, and I think this is another of those uh, areas where... If you would bring a class to this theme park, you would have an area, maybe half an hour even, when yeah. you have, you know, you get one guide from the park, uh, and then you actually do an activity, you know, related to programming. So you have these kind of blocks, because this would be hard to do for just like any kind of visitor randomly, mm -hmm. but I think this is perfect for a classroom setting. Maybe you get the blocks and you, you know, you, you put physical blocks of, uh, with all the redstone patterns and you make a light bulb go on or yeah. this kind of stuff. I, yeah. I think they, it would have to be a guided thing mm -hmm. because it's electricity, right? You don't right. want to. <laughs> and I think, you know, if we had 10 days instead of, uh, you know, one hour, I think we <laughs> could come up with good ideas also for just the general visitors. Maybe they just need to push a block somewhere to mm -hmm. open the doors and then, right. you know, stuff like that. That's, yeah. that's safe. And you could, you could set it up so that it's it's safe, like you said. You know, you just kind of have to slide the pieces around, like one of those sliding block puzzles. Like, you're, there's no way, if you touch this, it's not going to electrocute you. It's only once the circuit com is complete that the electricity goes through. So it'd be cool to kind of learn about electricity here. Do we want this to kind of mirror the human's discovery of electricity, or is this, like... Does that not really match up with human history? I haven't thought about that. Yeah, um, I don't know if it really You can explore fits. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll think about that. Cool. Yeah. Dude, so that anyway, sounds great. So moving on, so we're now on the right side, right? Sure. Now we are moving north. I mean up, or whatever. <laughs> Let's say it's north. So you're moving up, and you're trying to get out of the desert. It's all dead, you know. Nobody's there. You're trying to save yourself. And you mm -hmm. go and you climb a mountain. So now you're actually going up because there's a mountain in front of you. So first of all, you turn. So that's just a transition from the desert into the mountains. Cool. And then because I want to have on the top of this mountain is the snow biome. So it's kind of you. Can't, I'm not sure how you do artificial snow anyway, but it's nice because the only reason I won't do that is also because there's the snow is a biome in Minecraft, but also because in Roller Coaster Tycoon there was a bobsled coaster. Ooh. I always thought that was nice. So I would have like bobsled coasters. That sounds there. awesome. Yeah. And then another one is I want to have a vertical drop coaster. There was also one like, and I would I was thinking about this one. You could, because you're already, you've climbed the mountain, right? Right. And so now you're actually on top. And so the coaster would just come in and then you pick people up and then it just goes straight up <laughs> into the mountain. And it yeah. would be one of those that goes down and then it comes back out of the mountain, does a loop. It was, oh, was just man. one that goes like uh, in and out. Plus the bobsled one is also there. So they like, oh, you know, that's they can, cool. So that would be kind of the twine. mountain of excitement. Yeah. You know, coming out of the redstone, which is kind of mined and everything. Now you want something packed again with like yeah. really hardcore roller coasters. You, you need to have peaks and valleys in the story and it kind of fits here. Like this is a, a real high point in the excitement and a physical high point as well. That's cool. I always, so basically, yeah, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I always like seeing like the sunset from the mountains as well in Minecraft. Just the sunset in general, but 
it'd be cool if, you know, maybe at the end of the coaster you get off and it's kind of in a valley in between two mountains. Um, and maybe you go into, like, a cave. And then from there you can see this, like, artificial sunset. Like, there's, like, fake windows built in and it's, like, a, a mountain that someone's turned into a house in Minecraft. And so you can see this artificial sunset through the through the windows. would be kind of cool. Yeah, and so and and as far as the the kind of inside of the mountain, because the, huh? the the point is to descend from the mountain down. But sure. you know, you can take the coaster that goes down. The, the the idea is that at the bottom of the mountain, inside of the mountain, this is where you reach diamond. You go so much down, nice. And and you know, and the vertical coaster can go past, and there could also be like elevators or different kind of ways to get down there. Yeah. But the idea is you go that deep, you know, because you've done you've done the iron before, right? Now mm -hmm. you want to go past iron, and so you you get the blue lapis. What is it called? The uh, lapis. Something like that. Anyway, and you get you see the redstone, and then you you know how you get to the bedrock and stuff like that. You get diamonds for the first time, so this is where you get all your you know you've lost your gear. And now you're like, oh yeah, cool. I have diamond. <laughs> and so awesome. and that's kind of you've you know you've geared up, and now so you, now you're going from the top right side. You go across again. So now you're north or top of the lake. So mm -hmm. you come out of the mountain, you descend out, and you are now in a town. You know how like randomly you can you can um, yeah find the you villages. Get the villages exactly. So this is your rest point now. This is because you've been in a park for a while. This is your lunch time. Yeah. So you have a huge <laughs> town. You put like restaurants all. Of, I mean, you could you would have snacks before you know next to the mine and you sure. know, maybe underwater stuff like that. But this is your like main where you put all your restaurants because you get you gotta cool. have that. Dude, uh, I love know, that. And we could connect to the garden area, the farming place. You know, have have kind of like a farmer's market kind of area. And then, you know, the restaurants can use locally grown, like grown in the park ingredients. That'd be really cool. Oh, that'd be cool. I love yeah. that. Maybe a grown in our grown in our gardens, yeah. three biomes back. And it's it's, uh, <laughs> that would be totally cool that you actually, because yeah, I mean, you would want to show like, oh, this is an orchard or whatever. Yeah. And, and they would actually use those stuff and then locally. That I love that. Yeah, because so if cool. you just put a couple of McDonald's in there, then the kids aren't realizing that like this is where food comes from. It's like, oh yeah, we grow plants and then food comes from <gasps> McDonald's. I get it. <laughs> it's like no, this they're actually what? connected. Totally, and that's where you put a bakery and all of that, and the yes. cake making, all of those parts of oh, Minecraft yeah. would be actually in this uh, town area. Cool. I like that a lot. You could do all kinds of stuff in the town. You know, you could have a little performance venue if you wanted to. Yes. Um, but yeah, just a nice place to kind of rest. I like that. Yeah, and so now, and, and you know, you got your gear, now you've rested up, you ate your lunch, now you're ready. Yeah. For to get real. Right? <laughs> so at the end of the town, and this is usually how it also happens in Minecraft, at the end of the town, and you've just been to the bottom, so you got your diamond stuff and you got your, oh yeah, and also there would be, there would have to be lava either in the previous one or in the iron one already. I think it should have like a lava area. Anyway, sure. so now you know, yeah, now you have all of the ingredients to build the portal into the nether. Yes. So at the end of the, at the end of the village, once you're done with it, now you're ready for the hard part. So there's a, portal into the nether you know how they build like the, the two on top and three on the side yeah and i was thinking you know how there's this little purple pattern right i, I was thinking how to recreate that and the best <laughs> idea i have so far and please uh, come up with a better one but i would have so this is like it would actually be a tunnel uh-huh so it would be a tunnel and like maybe it goes into a mountain so that you don't actually see but the that it's actually a tunnel but the idea is to have like hanging this kind of ropes hanging down from the ceiling so it's a yeah. tunnel and you have purple ropes hanging down from a ceiling like all a lot of them it's kind of like one of those you know how sometimes there would be these kind of art installations where they have either mirrors i'm talking about like modern kind of yeah gallery style even experiential gallery style <laughs> when it just kind of tries to trick your perception. They have uh -huh. like hanging mirrors. It would be in that kind of style, ex except it's these hanging things cool. down. That basically, as you're walking through it, you can't see ahead, you can't see behind. You know, you can just walk. And then when you're done with that, you come out on the other side, and now yeah. you're in the nether. Oh, I love that. That's really cool. And you could, and with the the layers of those kind of ropes hanging down, like. Well, for one, you could have the pattern printed on the ropes, so you always see that kind of portal pattern as you move through, but... Yes. It could also start Plus to it's get... moving and... Yeah, you could start to see more of the kind of, like, the nether light shining through as you get closer, because yes. at first, you know, there's maybe, like, a bunch of layers of ropes, so you can't see really anything beyond it. 
but eventually things start to get lighter and lighter and you're like what's going to be behind this next one that's really cool i like that idea that's cool that's great and so and and i was i was thinking about the nether you would actually so this one needs to be underground but not actually because nether if you think about it it's pretty open space right it's almost like a canyon so Uh what i would do is and this would of course have to uh, depend on location where the park is actually constructed but you would actually this part of the park would be built inside of a canyon so wow. you would have to have a location that actually has that kind of topology there mm-hmm. ideally whoever <laughs> it's, we're just imagining it right now so yeah. you would have this canyon and then you would put they would actually build a roof across it cool. so that it would be closed it's still outside it's an actual canyon but yeah. it's underground like they pretty much blocked wow. all the sun out and all of, but but you know but you have this big open space because I'm thinking about you know you have those mines previously which are you can dig down but it's Mm -hmm. small this one is a huge underground yeah yeah and you have to have like lights at the bottom for the lava and all of that kind of stuff so you really want to have the feeling of oh I mean a huge (laughs) place and there's roller coasters going around for whatever reason maybe there's a lava coaster yeah Uh, you know that kind of stuff so that was kind of my nether idea and that's you know how nether is scary yeah so that yeah, would it's be like be the scary. floating May- oh, oh yeah. that's great there would definitely have to be like a flying ride i'm not sure you know like those something that just goes across all of this canyon uh-huh. and then you and you know you almost come into that baby screaming face thing that's shooting stuff at you that's so there awesome. would be a lot of stuff that just goes kind of around and inside of the mountain and uh, outside and oh, that sounds so cool and, and super scary with all the pigmen. Oh, <laughs> scared thinking about. Do we do we want to represent any kind of combat, or is it all about kind of running away from the the mobs and the Ender Dragon and all that kind of stuff? I don't know. You tell me. I have. No I don't idea. know. I haven't thought of that one. Because I, I do. We want to give everyone their foam weapons back at this point. Their foam tools. Well, they got their diamond tools. Okay. Oh previously. yeah, you're right. You're right. So I, I do think it's kind of fun to have people give people options. You know, it's not like there's a story element where you actually have to go defeat an enemy or complete something here. It's just kind of an area to explore. But if you want to, maybe you could have uh, the kind of final showdown where you either you put on your, like, diamond armor and someone else puts on, like, the zombie pigman kind of outfit and you guys, like, have a sword fight. It could be a foam sword fighting area. Or it could just kind of be, like, a a more arcade kind of experience. Um, I don't know. If you want to have, like, a sword fighting? <laughs> I don't know how it's going to work. Uh, it's kind of hard to do combat in a theme park without like hurting somebody. But yeah, I, I do think it sounds fun. You could definitely do some archery uh, arcade games. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Plus you could just have a show as well. Like That's yeah. also a common thing to just imagine a battle in there or something like that. Right, right. And this one might not connect to uh, human history. <laughs> At least I hope not. Or maybe this is the future. <laughs> Um, Dante's Rings of Hell. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, but it would be something that the the really hardcore Minecraft players, you know, you have to go to the Nether, you have to see it. Yeah, sounds really cool. I like that. And And the canyon is a cool idea. Yeah, I mean that was just my idea. Like this is how we would actually build it. And so now you're on the top left of our little nine by nine grid. So now we have to extend two more up. Uh, and that, that's because at the end of the nether, so you're still facing up now yep. when you get out of the nether, you get out into a, it's kind of still grassland, it's like hills, and it has a castle built there. Ooh. This is the time you've been to the nether, you've, got, you've gotten all of this stuff you need to get to the end. So this would be in the hills, there's Enderman floating around, it's, it's kind of creepy. Like uh-huh. you've you know, Nether is creepy as well. But yeah. this one is also kinda eerie. It's kinda that you know in the movies just before they go beat the bad guy, there's always yeah. it feels kinda like gloomy. There's yeah. Like you feel like the bad guy's gonna the win. Sky. Yeah. 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 And so this would be so that that's why this setting is kinda medieval setting because a lot of people actually build, you know, this kind of like almost like a fortress. You now you you've got everything. You've built your fortress, plus you need to put in all of those, you know, the bookcases. Mm-hmm. With where you enchant stuff, so it's all that kind of a theme cool. uh, going, and this is where you prepare for your final task, which is when you go to the end, right? So this is kind of, this is the end of the theme park, right? It's, it's not really the happiest thing ever, you know. You gotta, I, I almost want you to feel that kind of like, oh, things <laughs> gotta get down in yeah. the next one. 
<laughs> so that's why I'm not sure what kind of rides you would put there. It'd be more like mages and I don't know. I don't know about the rides. Hmm. I don't either. <sighs> so is this maybe it's uh, just a theme area? Yeah, it could just be a themed area. I don't know. Whenever I get um, really far into a game of Minecraft, I I start making really bizarre palaces and stuff, and like. They have really unnatural stuff, like a big column of water that you can use as an elevator, like you can Ooh. just swim totally vertically. This it works totally in Minecraft. In here. I love that you're saying that, yeah, this area would be um, just kind of, yeah, the kind of the crazy stuff that you can build. It's kind of, it's almost like a surreal land or something yes. like that. That's one of my favorite things about the aesthetics of Minecraft is that there, it is a, a very blocky interpretation of natural beauty. But then once humans come in, they make, like, the weirdest, most bizarre, messed up, unusual things. Like, I always build everything out of glass, and it's just floating in the middle of it, the air, and there do all are, kinds of crazy stuff. You know those uh, crazy mushrooms, and then you have cows with mushrooms on top of it? And yes. And would totally fit in <laughs> Mushrooms. Here. Yeah, yeah, mushrooms, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So this is when I was thinking, so... As you come out of the nether into this surreal fantasy land almost, then the next one goes back into a mountain. Like it needs to be, again, some sort of a portal where you go underground, where you just get to this big space with the dragon. I have no zero idea how this would work in a theme park. Maybe it's like, a, maybe it's one of the, I don't know, you know how you have those attractions where you just sit down and watch a movie? Yeah. Actually, maybe that would be, or maybe even the ones where also the, 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 yeah. the, the chairs move. So it's kind of immersive. Right. So basically, you feel you're maybe you're watching the Ender Dragon battle from your little seats, and everything's shaking, and it, and you have 3D glasses. Oh yeah, I love this cool. idea. That sounds great. Cause I, yeah, the the combat is gonna be a little bit awkward. So yeah, making it a movie, I think that's really cool. And, you know, and maybe you could yeah, go ahead. You could do like minor updates. You know, if if uh, your your ride vehicle has four seats in it kind of take each person's like avatar and put them in the movie like you could just kind of swap Ooh. out the the skins oh. to be whoever's watching the movie let's then go, it would let's feel like you're more experimental connected. here let's say that you actually have controllers and let's say uh -huh. that you actually see your character on the i mean this one would be this one would have to be then more of a small compartment instead of having like you usually this kind of is like one screen and uh, maybe 50 people this one would right. be maybe like just per family if they just go into these little vr rooms where you have like a boat for four or whatever a boat whatever um and then you actually see your characters and you control them oh uh, this would oh, be that's fine. but it, but everything is like 3d because we rarely get to get that experience right with 3d glasses and everything Maybe it's sure. even augmented. Maybe it's actually VR this time, and then. But I, I feel like I feel like the best part of theme parks is to actually have that space in front of you, that big space. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I would totally put this kind of ride. It's at the very end, you know. And you've done the hard part. You've done the Nether, and now you've done this crazy surreal stuff. Like you, you're at the end of the park. You just want to sit down and enjoy the credits. Like enjoy the <laughs> cool. final bell, and you oh, beat neat. the dragon. Yeah, I like that. And it could kind of show, like, um, short clips of each biome that you've been through and, like, kind of the journey thus far of just kind of, like, stock footage from the theme totally. park. But it'd, it'd be, be kind, kind of, of cool. like a recollection of what you've done so far. So it's To get here. Yeah, and then you... Oh, I love that. That's great. Okay, cool. And then that could be our advertising for, like, the TV commercial would just be, like, going through the, the life cycle of a Minecraft player, yeah. that kind of thing. And, you know, and this is the end, right? You were just returning back and just kind of doing freeform sandbox. Because before it was, like, a clear storyline to there. From right. the start through all the ages, Stone Age, blah, 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 to the top. Now you go back, and the only one that I have left, and I'm going to see how much you like this one, was the <laughs> bottom right. So right. between the entrance area in, and the redstone, because here you have the, the right, let's say there's one missing. And so that one mm -hmm. I would actually put would be the big store area, you know, exit through the gift shop style. <laughs> and the theme would be behind the scenes. So you're kind of like, how does a video game work? You know, wow. you're like, how does Minecraft work in, in a sense of like, because, you know, it, it's going to have stores, so it's already kind of like more modern. So maybe just make it, you know, that kind of fourth wall has fallen just before you get mm -hmm. out. And like, yeah, now you're like, and you maybe see it from the other side, like you go into this from the, from you, because you're returning back through the redstone area and then you get in and then maybe you're behind a glass and you feel like, oh, now I'm in the computer and you're actually learning how video game works. 
Plus, it's a oh, lot of shops, cool. and you can buy everything that you didn't buy left. Yeah. Oh, that's really fun. I like that a lot. Yeah. Anyway, that's, Man, that's, that's really my pitch. cool. That's my pitch to you. <laughs> Let's build it. Are you excited? I think that was a great pitch. I mean, I think you could get a lot of grants, like all the educational parts of this, or like, you know, take over some some like science museums that are are for sale. You know, buy it and turn it into Minecraft land. I was thinking about doing like a Minecraft uh, hotel at a certain part, but now I think it should be mm. integrated. Like maybe each biome has like a very nice, like a home that's obviously been built by a high end Minecraft player, and it's like a hotel you can actually rent. Ah, I see. Yeah, wouldn't that be cool? Ooh. I like it. Because <laughs> especially, like, the one in the I mountain, be... I would love to stay there. Like, there are just so many places in Minecraft that I just kind of yes. want to, to visit in real life. That's where you could actually look at the sunset, because after the park, you know, you stay in the... During the closing hours, you can only be in that part, right? Wow. But you could actually watch a sunset from that oh, from the mountain hotel. That's cool. Hotel. Oh, that's a great... Plus, I personally would love to be in the tropic rainforest mm -hmm. stuff at this beginning. I love that. So that could be like two places. And then of course you have the village there. And the village is right next to the mountain, so you could have that opened up longer. Yeah. So you could actually have that go until midnight or something. So you can go eat there, you know, dinner and then you go back into the mountains to your little nice house hotel. Cool. And and this is a little bit maybe too much detail, but if the basic grid is like this, um maybe we could take like a small area like in between these six right here, these six blocks. And yes. that could be where the hotel is. So it's it actually covers six different biomes, but it's only the small area that we have to keep kind of locked or, or closed off at night or whatever. One other thing is, um, this is something I've always wanted in like, I don't know, five years ago or seven years ago, I was thinking about doing this as like a business idea. It's to have a, um, a kind of voxel-based gym, which sounds crazy, like a place to exercise that's kind of like you build your own like Minecraft level out of these big like... Uh, padded cubes that connect together and then you can like run around and okay. jump and play on them so it's basically like a oh, playground kind of like a parkour yeah like a parkour playground that's like minecraft themed made out of like soft cubes I love it. um just for like a playground like some place to let the kids run around and maybe that could be up in the village like as just like a little play area um but yeah that's just plus i can tell you kids love that i so i do gymnastics and we worked in like we we call them parents night out when Parents at Friday nights, they drop off kids in the gym and we would actually just watch them. The thing they love the most is going into the foam pit and building stuff out of mats, <laughs> like the huge mats. So, yeah, they love if you If you can put something like that, put foam and blocks together and make them build stuff, they're totally in for cool. it. Cool. This, this sounds awesome, man. I love this theme park. I would totally love to go there. I was really nervous to talk to you, man, because I, I really value your work, and I've, like, watched so many videos of you talking and, like, about, you know, education and about you. pixel art. And your your blog is super good. Like, your your magazine, Retronator, it, if the audience hasn't seen it, definitely check that out. Yeah, you can figure out how to spell it. Yeah, I think Retronator magazine is the most in educationally informative. Like, of course, there's the video mm -hmm. game that is, you know, it's one once upon a time. It's going to be the best educational thing ever. Mm -hmm in the, at least in the small little niche of video games. <laughs> um, but what it's really already useful right now, yeah, it's my Retronator magazine where I write from featuring artists to, and I always try to teach something as well. So the latest article I had was a feature of an artist where I actually, as I went through her artworks, I also explained how color schemes work because she has really good artworks on colors. Um, and then I have other ones like how does graphical projection work, which is how does a 3D object gets drawn in 2D. And I actually, the one that's most interest that would be most interesting to people of this particular episode is the one, the biggest article I've done is called Voxels and Pixels, or Pixels and Voxels, the long answer. Because somebody on Quora X asked, what is the difference between pixels and voxels? And you can answer that in like two sentences. Right. Uh, but I wrote two hours <laughs> long of material. No, it's actually 20 minutes long article, but it's a lot of people like it because it explains how video game graphics work, basically. So cool. Uh, kind of underneath the hood, and yeah, that one, if you like pixels and voxels, then definitely go check that one out. Yeah, and, and you should definitely play Pixel Art Academy. There's a, a, a free intro that you can play, and the yes. full game is not expensive, and if you have any interest in art whatsoever, it doesn't have to be just pixel art. That's just kind of 
a, a manageable way to enter yes. the world of creating art. Pixel art um, is a very a forgiving tool. medium. In or, or no, I'm not gonna say forgiving. That's not true. I take that back. Pixel art is a very uh, welcoming medium to beginners because when a master pixel artist puts down a pixel, when a com and a complete beginner puts down a pixel, the, wow. the result is exactly the same. No, yeah. no other art medium, unless other that looks like pixel art, like embroidery. Are, are gonna have that effect like if you try and do pencil drawing like you you gotta know how to use the pencil and like layer it smoothly like the beginner is not gonna have the same result same with like oil paints just before you get to it like even <laughs> mixing paint is an art in its own form yeah. so pixel art is you put down a pixel it's gonna be exactly like when i put down a pixel so it's a very quick you know entry into it but yeah, Pixel Art Academy as the game. So I do want to say, yeah, it's right now there's only pre-orders. It costs $10 for the basic version, um, but it's only pre-orders. There's nothing actually to learn in the game yet, almost. Um, but I'm working on it very hard. And right now we have an alpha version. That one costs $40. If you, it, It's just for the people that really want to support the game because it's mm -hmm. not actually worth $40. <laughs> but if you really want to support this idea, then yeah, you can actually start playing the game in the latest one that I've put out. I put updates out maybe once a month. And the latest one that I put out is Pico 8 update, which I'm going to make a video. And probably once you, while you're watching this right now, there's probably already that video out there somewhere, which is going to be linked. Um, yeah. And, and it's the basic idea is you find somebody in the game that is making a Pico 8 game and then they ask you to do the graphics for it. And so you get a virtual Pico 8 and you get your little drawing tools and you learn how to pixel art software works and then you make your game and you make graphics for this Pico 8 game. And then you can actually, and that doesn't work yet, but it's gonna work very soon. You can actually share that game with your friends and they can just play in the browser the game that you've drawn that's awesome. graphics for. So that's my- That's so cool. That's wow. kind of the core. But yeah, <laughs> I'm working on it and it's gonna come out in 2027. <laughs> that's the final no, release that's, date. That's why. That's why I just keep. It's gonna be kind of like Minecraft, honestly. I right. started from zero and I just keep adding to it, and it's just gonna get better and better and better. So that's awesome. You can I, buy I now and too. save five dollars because pre-orders are cheaper. But you can just wait until there's something actually to learn. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's an amazing idea, and it's it's going to be super cool. And the website's awesome. Retronator.com, right? Yes. Yeah. It's a blog awesome. about pixel art and pixel art games and sometimes Minecraft voxels. I love all old school art. I love all art, but Retronator itself is focused just on old school pixel art, voxel art, and new school mm -hmm. as well. But yeah, just this kind of art medium. Well, Matei, thank you so much for being on, dude. This was awesome. No, I didn't think I it could be it. done, but we did it. <laughs> Minecraft it was great. We park. really want, in 10 years, I want to be in this park. You hear yes. me, Microsoft? Make it happen. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks for staying up so late. That was oh, amazing. It's totally, I am. I was so happy. Thanks for having me on your show. Looking sure. Thank you for to all more the more amusement sparks, sparks <laughs> in the future. Sparks, sparks. Thanks. Yeah, one every three weeks. Uh, I'm keeping it going. Thank you for keeping Retronator going, and I love what you're doing with Pixel Art Academy, man. It's great. You have a great a career ahead of you, and Thank behind you. you already. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll awesome. see you around on the internet. <laughs>
planning out like a story arc or coming up with game mechanics and then getting to a point where I realized like this isn't that great or I still need something like something's missing from this. It's not ready to be shown to the public yet. Um, and then I would just kind of like abandon it. So it was just like, I'd rather have a project where it's like I start and finish it in public so people can kind of see the whole thing happening. And plus you have to tell me uh, and maybe next time or somewhere offline what your ideas for the future of education are. I can do some quick uh, quick five minute spiel if you Please want. Please do, yeah, yeah. I totally okay. wanted to hear because you said this is gonna totally work into your future and now you, Dude, you, you I, get I think, the five minutes to talk about this. I've been looking at like at your your model a lot and like your um I think it was a thesis presentation that you did. Yes. That video. It was like this is this is so what I was hoping to do in like two years from now. But um so i I've been teaching high school math for the last three years and I don't know, I think a lot of talent is kind of wasted in the classroom, which I know sounds really dark and sad, but um, I don't know. I think there's so many amazing resources online. And one of the hardest parts about teaching is like a student being absent. Like I can't teach you if you're not here. Yes. And if you're at home, you don't learn anyway, even though there's, you know, everything you could ever want to learn. Someone's teaching it for free online. Like a master teacher is teaching you for free and Khan you're not Academy. listening. <laughs> right, like Khan Academy, there's so many things, and Pixel Art Academy, I mean, there's there's so many amazing, like, free online resources that people aren't using, you know, uh, YouTube is just full yes. of incredible tutorials, but people aren't doing them, like, people aren't interested in learning as much as I think they should be, and I feel like education is the, the tool to staying out of out of trouble, out of jail, out of poverty, is to get passionate about something enough to where you want to learn about it, and then suddenly you're employed, and you have an awesome job, and you can rise out of wherever you come from. So I don't know. I think that's super important. And one of the most important things is figuring out motivation. Like I, I enjoy making educational content, but I don't think more of it necessarily needs to be made, at least in mathematics, because there's already a lot of really good stuff out there. I just need to get people's eyeballs to go onto the screen to watch some videos because they will help you in the long run. So I'm trying to come up with like an incentive system, uh, more or less. And the way I'm trying to do that is coming up with a multimedia approach um it's it's working on like a novel right now um i actually am working with a writer who's writing this story for me about this kind of magical school kind of like how you made the connection Ooh. to harry potter yes it's a sort of sci-fi kind of anime inspired uh school that's just really like a high level stem school science technology engineering and math and with art as well um but basically the goal is that people will see this, read this story and be like, these, you know, it's cool that these students are learning so much. I want to learn something as well. And then through the website, have connections to all these portals that can teach you cool things with kind of, I don't know if I want to use gamification. I've been like reading a lot of negative things about gamification, but I love video games as teaching tools. Yes. So maybe doing it more of a, of a narrative gamification, kind of like Pixel Art Academy, versus just here's some gold coins for reading Perfect. your chapter you know um so yeah i'm just basically trying to figure out a way of of motivating people more and getting them to self-motivate and become self-teachers using the resources becoming a better person so pixel art academy is a perfect execution of that because it's narrow enough to where um, you only get people who are interested in pixel art or or the foundations of art and then you can teach them all the way through within the same system the areas of science technology engineering art and math and it's just like way too much stuff and if you think about it like you don't have to take over the world i mean all at once like so the the you know the steam the acronym you were talking about right i'm doing the a part of steam so the art mm -hmm. and if you do the m part of steam which is math right perfect yeah, we already that's have two, two out of five <laughs> you don't have to do all five. Oh, i love that that's a great point cool. and i i'm pretty sure i'm gonna have to stay within the math area yeah. um but definitely incorporating more video game stuff and just board game design and card games and all those games can teach you a lot of really cool problem solving skills so i think basically it's, it's coming up with this this fiction this cool world where learning is cool and then here are some actual lessons from this fictional teacher like that's the other thing is if the teachers in harry potter each had their own youtube channels teaching you about things you could actually use i think that'd be really amazing i know we don't need Defense against the dark arts in real life, but you know maybe there's some subject areas that kind of overlap, and those teachers could actually teach someone. They're like a fan of the of the series, so they go out and learn what this, the characters learn. 
That's cool. kind of what I'm hoping to do. Yeah, well, it's, I, it's I would complicated. send my students to your school whenever they need to learn <laughs> some trigonometry for their perspective class. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about this future of where we can yes. learn stuff while we play a video game, while we are learning, like while we are immersed in a story that just pulls you through. And Hopefully for this, the next generation and the one after that, these online resources will be better utilized. That's my hope.